We're going to be playing at Capitol Casino. It's my favorite place to play anywhere in the world. It's here in Sacramento, California, only a half hour away from my home. First hand we get into is about 20 minutes into the session. We're down about 70 bucks. There was one limper. I raced a 15 with pocket fours from the low jack. I get a call from the small blind and the limper. So it's just going to be the three of us headed off to a flop, which comes out glorious when it comes queen four deuce with two diamonds. The only real concern here is someone having a flush draw and getting there. But other than that, it looks like it's a pretty damn good flop. The uh, small blind decides to lead out for $25. The next player ends up folding. It's on me and I'm trying to figure out whether I want to raise here or just call. I think calling's proper. Let him continue with all his uh, queens. Unfortunately, we get an ace on the turn and he checks it rather quickly. If he has a queen, the ace is going to scare him. How's a preflop raiser? I'm going to continue to back just in case he has that flush draw. See if he'll pay me off. He thinks about it for a little bit and then starts to compile a raise. Well, when he starts to do this, I'm thinking, well, what could he have? Could he have uh, like a ace high diamond draw? Could he have ace queen? Pocket deuces? He is an action player. Maybe he called with like five three. Well, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be folding to any bets from here on out. So I might as well get the money in. So if a scare card like a diamond comes, he doesn't shut down with, say, a two pair or a set of deuces. So I jam. He snap calls right away. I'm going, that's not a good sign. River card comes as a king of clubs. I say I have a set and he rolls over five, three offsuit. Ouch. Not the way I wanted to start off my day, uh, getting stacked. Well, about 10 minutes later, I'm in the small blind after reloading with 10-3 suited, and uh, I get a cheap play when it's limped around. So I see a flop that comes out, ace, 10-10. Pretty good for a 10. Yeah. I check it around. It gets checked all the way around again. Turn card comes is a three of diamonds. I got this locked up. I check it again, seeing if someone wants to take a stab at it. And the player in the cutoff decides to bet out for uh, $20. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and put in a raise here. Don't want to make it too big. Kind of want to get called. If they have an ace, I think they're going to call. If they have a 10, maybe they're going to repop it. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely willing to go with my hand. They don't have very much left in their stack. So I figured, you know, make it $60. They'll call. I can get like the other $80, $90 in on the uh, river. River card comes as a nine of hearts, pretty much a complete blank. I jam for their remaining stack and they quickly fold. So we finally win a pot and uh, you can see how big it is. It's monstrous. Over the next hour, we go completely card dead. Being stuck in card dead is awful. Uh, but here we pick up king 10 offsuit and decided to defend from the big blind against a raise and two callers flop comes out king jack five pretty good flop for my hand check it over to the initial raiser who puts out a bet and i'm not quite sure what he could have here um i have a, a couple reads on him uh, we play against each other a lot and i don't think he's super strong here i think he might have some sort of draw the player at the end of the table in the cutoff also puts in the call for the 45. Uh, with my stack size, if I put in the call for the 45, I'll have about a pot size bet left. So I'm just going to jam it here, deny equity to all those draws. You know, there's a lot of ace tens, queen tens, flush draws, pair and flush draws. There's a lot, a lot out there. And if I can just take this down right now, that's fine. If I run into king queen, or ace king so be it the first player ends up folding out and that's over to the player in the cutoff uh, he takes a long hard think about this and uh, pretty sure he has a king here and uh, he's not too happy about his kicker and he's trying to think whether i'll be uh, making this move with some sort of draw which i might be but eventually he lets it go well, we're stuck about $500, but you know what gets you happy is when you see a premium hand like Pocket Kings from the hijack. We have one limper. I raised to 20, and we end up getting three callers. 
So we're going to go three ways to this flop with 61 in. Flop comes up pretty good. Jack, 10, deuce. There are two hearts out there, so and there's lots of possible draws. Now the big blind leads out for $60. Pot size bet. Rather a large bet. I'm not going anywhere. The other person folded out, so I'm just going to put in the call and see what happens on the turn. Seven of diamonds come, so it connects with those nine eights he might have been betting with. Trying to decide what I wanted to do. He bets $100, and now it's uh, deciding on whether to raise or not. If he has a flush draw, um, I think I should go ahead and raise here. If he has eight nine, I'm toast. If he has jack ten, I'm basically toast. If he's bluffing, I think he's going to continue to bluff. So I decided to just put in the call. And if a blank comes, I'm going to be uh, calling him down, of course. River card comes is not a good one. It's a jack of diamonds. So now if he was betting top pair, he got there again. He bets $100. I'm not going anywhere. I think his flush draws missed, straight draws missed. I call and he shows ace queen. So I'm not sure whether I played this right, but um, we do win the, the pot. On such a draw heavy board like that and someone betting into you, I would still be raising. If he has jack 10, so be it. You're not going to be going anywhere. Get value from those draws when you can. All right, we're only $160 away from being even, and we picked up pocket kings again. There's one limper in front of us. We raised to 20. We get a quick call from the player on our left, and uh, two more callers, one from the limper, or one from the big blind, and one from the button. So the four of us see a flop with $84 in the center. That comes out 433 rainbow. Really good flop for pocket kings. Uh, should get action from all those medium sized pocket pairs. As long as you don't get action from a three, you're probably a pretty happy fellow. I bet $30. I get a quick call from the player on the button for the 30, and the big blind also ends up putting in the call. So just the three of us are going to see a turn card. And it comes a five of spades. Not the greatest card in the world. Put some possible straights out there. Someone with a hand like uh, ace five and now has top pair and a straight draw. Maybe someone with ace deuce made a wheel. Six, seven could have been there. The player in the big blind assembles a bet for $95. Um, he doesn't have that much left after that. He has probably about 300 more. Um, I'm trying to think about whether I want to put in a raise here or not. Uh, I'm a little concerned with a player on the button, whether he might have a three in his hand. As I said, he beat me with five, three last time when I had my pocket fours. Uh, I'm just going to play this a little cautiously. Just put in the call. I think that's way too cautious. You need to put in a raise there to protect against someone having a draw. You don't want anyone to get there for $95. In fact, his bet size makes me think that he is betting just to get a cheaper showdown because you would normally bet at least $200 on this turn card. Yeah, you need to put in a raise. It's a little dangerous to give a cheap card to a, say, a flush draw or a straight draw. But if he doesn't raise here, I feel like I have the best hand. And if a blank comes, I can bet for value. Well, we're hoping for a nice blank on the river and after the dealer scoops in the chips, they put out the nine of diamonds, which is the biggest blank in the world unless someone specifically had pocket nines. First player now thinks for a while before deciding on a check. Once he checks, I'm pretty sure that I have the best hand here. I'm not really concerned with the player on the button. I'm only concerned about getting some value from the player who just checked. I think he probably has a five in his hand Maybe a hand kind of like ace five or five six. I decided to go for $200. I want it big enough where it might look like it's a bluff, but I definitely want to get value. I thought about jamming, but I didn't think he would call the jam. I think he might get curious enough for a $200 bet. Because if I jam, I'm basically trying to bluff into the person with a huge stack on the button. And that might look a little bit uh, too strong. So anyway, the player on the button does end up folding. I don't think they had too much to begin with, but that's just my opinion. And now it's to the player in the big blind. 
He tanks for a very long time. I'm going to skip ahead. But eventually, his curiosity gets to him, and he puts in the call. So it took two hours, but looks like we're going to be back to even and a little bit in the green. We've been doing $15 bomb pots every dealer change. I'm not very good at bomb pots. I'll let you know that right now. I don't really care for them. It's hard to get any kind of read on someone when they can play any two cards at any time. But I do it because it creates more action for the table. And so I just consider it a $15 donation. This particular bomb pot, I am on the button with 8-4 offsuit, very strong hand. Flop comes 8-7 deuce, and it gets checked around to me. So, wow. I got position. I got uh, 8. I'm going to take a stab at this and see what happens. So I end up betting $55, about half the size of the pot. I'm just hoping this takes it down. If someone plays back at me, I'm going to be snap folding this thing because it is a piece of you know what. I end up getting two callers, uh, both from players from the previous hand where I had pocket kings and the flop came 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, I believe that both players are a little bit overly active and maybe chasing here. So I'm just really hoping for a blank. And I think any kind of blank they're going to give up on. If they have a one pair type of hand, they're probably not going to like it. And when the three of spades comes on the turn, I don't think they're calling with any kind of hand that has a three in it, of course. Um, I think this is a green light to bet again. They both end up checking to me. I put out a wager of $100. I'm pretty sure this is going to get the job done. Unless someone was trapping me with a really big hand, which I do not believe. I think I would have heard about it by now. Anyway, they both fold and we win a bomb pot with 8-4 offsuit. All right, we're cruising right along up over $500 now. We pick up ace-8 uh, suited in the big blind. There is a one person limps in, player raises a 15. I get a call for the 15 and I'm just going to defend uh, basically what I'm looking for is flopping either an eight or a flush. Don't really get too excited if I flop an ace in this, in this spot, cause I'm probably going to be out kicked. Flop comes out ace king 10 with one club. So I got top pair backdoor flush draw. I check it over to the initial aggressor who puts out a pretty juicy size bet of $80. Wow. This is a really big size bet. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I can even think about calling with an ace here. It's just, he's representing a very strong hand, and he got called from the player on the button. Turn card comes is a nine of hearts. There's a little over $200 in the pot, and he comes out again with a pot size bet. So I would definitely be giving up here if I, if I got loose, very loose, to take one off on the flop. But I put this one in just to show the importance of knowing what kind of value you're looking for when you're playing a hand. Like I knew my top pair was not going to be good if I flopped an ace and I got heavy action. I was playing the hand for a flush and nothing else. So you got to know when to let it go. All right. It looks like we got pocket fours again. I opened for a raise to 15 from the hijack. I get a call from the cutoff player on the button and the player in the big blind. So we're going to end up going four ways to this flop with $61 in the center. Looking to flop a set, but instead it comes ace, deuce, three, rainbow. Now I do have a straight draw, but nothing much else. I kind of want to see the turn card. And if I check in and someone puts in a big bet, I'm probably going to have to let it go. So I decided... Better just go ahead and bet it myself. Maybe get someone to fold some like uh, medium sized pocket pairs. Maybe even some sort of weak ace. I do get two callers, so I have to proceed with caution, but caution to the wind when the turn card is a five of spades. We made this straight. Now I was trying to figure out how to get the most value. Now if I had a big ace here, I probably would bet small just to protect my hand somewhat. And I want to give an opportunity of someone to uh, to raise it to try to steal it away from me because my hand looks like a big ace at this point. They both end up putting in the call. So I don't think neither one is going to be uh, getting too feisty. 
Uh, river card comes as a blank. It's a jack of spades. First player checks. I'm thinking whether I should check this to the player behind me, see if he wants to take a stab at it or just bet it. I figured he must have some sort of ace to call me so far, so I put in a bet for 220, and they both quickly let it go. This ended up being the last hand of the day. We played for about another half hour or so, but didn't catch anything else. But after that bad start, we ended up having a pretty decent win. Came back the next day. Uh, excuse the angle on this one. This is like the first hand I played. There was a limper. Player raises to 15. I got ace, king, middle position. I make it 45. The player on my left, who you can't see, is out of the camera shot. Puts in the call. And so does the original limper for the 45. Now the original Razor decides that he's just going to go all in. He has about $190 in front of him. I'm going to re-isolate him because uh, I want to get rid of the other two players who have $45 invested. They both end up folding out. So we're going to see a run out on our very first hand. We got Ace King against the player and it comes Queen High, not very good. There are two hearts, we don't have any of those. I show my ace king. My opponent shows that he had ace king also, but had a free roll on us. Lucky for us, he did not catch. All right, for the next two and a half hours or so, I spent a lot of time just folding. And it was very frustrating. I stole a couple small pots uh, before the flop, but I didn't see a flop basically for two and a half hours. Just totally card dead. This particular hand, I have 10-8 suited in the big blind. There was one player who limped in. The next player raised to 40. Yes, I said 40. Definitely going to be folding to this size raise until there's one, two, three, four, five players calling. All right, for $40, I'm going to take a shot, defend my big blind with 10-8 suited. I can flop some sort of straight, some sort of flush, and of course I can flop maybe three eights or three tens. Two pair even will make me happy. So I put in the call. We have $280 in the main and we get to see a flop that comes ace, eight, eight. Oh, how beautiful that is. And it's rainbow. There's no flush draws present. So this is a pretty, pretty much locked up. Only thing I have to really worry about is someone having either pocket aces or an eight with a better kicker. The first player puts in the check. I check. It gets checked all the way around to the player in the cutoff who puts in a bet for $105. Now, they only have about another 100 and 120, 130 behind. If they were deeper, I might go ahead and just put in a raise here, but uh, I'm trying to get some sort of overcall. I'm pretty sure that the original raiser had some sort of ace-king, ace-queen type of hand. If not, they're going to be folding to this uh, bet size anyway. They do think about it for a while once it's folded back to them and decide to put in the call for the 105. They also have a short stack. They have about 155 left. The uh, player in the cutoff has about 135. When the jack of spades comes up, it puts a possible backdoor flush draw for the ace of spades. So I'm just going to go ahead and jam here. I don't want to give anyone a free card. You know, as I said, they got 155 and 135 between them. So I might as well just get the money in now while I know I'm good. First player thinks for a while and then finally puts in the call for the her remaining chips. Uh, next player does the same. So once all the chips get in there, we just have to dodge an ace and uh, we'll be taking down this big pot. I show my hand, river cards of four spades. Apparently no one has the backdoor flush draw because the uh, player shows ace jack for top two. The other one just threw their hand in the muck. So after two and a half hours, we finally won a freaking pot. We stayed and played for at least another 30, 40 minutes and was car dead again. Didn't have anything playable during that period. So after sitting there for a little over three hours, I decided that I'm just going to call it quits, come back on a different day. I was getting a little frustrated with not getting any cards to play. It was a pretty good game. And the only pot I won was that last one. So overall, we did all right. That first day, we ended up winning 675. Day two. 750 on that last pot and we did play a third day where we won like another 300 or so so our totals for the month are right up here and for the year to date so we're making progress heading along hopefully we can uh, fill those uh, temperature gauges up there with all our wins 
So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you haven't liked and subscribed by now, please do so. It'll help the channel grow. We're trying to hit that 10K mark for subscribers. So until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.